translation. Both by the rising and by the setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all-good personality of Godhead. Please repeat. By bo both by rising and by the setting, by the, the, sun the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all-good personality of Godhead. Hmm. And so it's a little lengthy purport. I'm going to read most of it, but not all of it. This verse indirectly confirms the greater importance of utilizing the human form of life to realize our lost relationship with the Supreme Life by acceleration of devotional service. Time and tide wait for no man. So the time indicated by the sunrise and sunset will be uselessly wasted if such time is not properly utilized for realizing identification of spiritual values. Even a fraction of the duration of life wasted cannot be compensated by any amount of gold. Human life is simply awarded to the living entity so that he can realize his spiritual identity and his permanent source of happiness. A living being, especially the human being, is seeking happiness because happiness is the natural situation of the living entity. But he is vainly seeking happiness in the material atmosphere. A living being is constitutional, constitutionally a spiritual spark of the complete whole and his happiness can be perfectly perceived in spiritual activities. The Lord is the complete spiritual whole and his name, form, qualities, pastimes, entourage and personality are all identical with him. Once a person comes in contact with any of the above-mentioned energies of the Lord through the proper channel of devotional service, the door to perfection is immediately opened. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord has explained such contact in the following words. Endeavor and devotional service are never baffled. Nor is there failure. Nor is there failure. A slight beginning of such activities is sufficient even to deliver a person from the great ocean of material fears. As a highly potent drug injected intravenously acts at once on the whole body, the transcendental topics of the Lord, injected through the ear of the pure devotee of the Lord, can act very efficiently. Oral reception of the transcendental message implies total realization. Just as fructification of one part of the tree implies fructification of all the other parts. This realization for a moment is the association of pure devotees, like Sukadev Goswami, who prepares one complete life for eternity. And thus, the sun fails to rob the pure devotee of his duration of life. Inasmuch as he is constantly busy in devotional service of the Lord, purifying his existence. Death is a symptom of the material infection of the eternal living being. Only due to material infection is the eternal living entity subjected to the laws of birth, death, old age, and disease. I'll go on to another part. A moment passed in the association of a pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental message of the Lord is a perfect guarantee for eternal life, for returning home, back home, back to Godhead. Maddaman gatvam purnam janma navidyate. In other words, a devotee of the Lord is guaranteed eternal life. A devotee's old age or disease in the present life is but an impetus for such guaranteed to eternal life. Hare Krishna, Jila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, nothing is ever born and nothing is ever 
destroyed. De does the sun rise and does the sun set? No, it doesn't. It's from our point of view, the sun rises and sets, but the sun is always in its orbit. We see, from a certain perspective, the sun is coming and then it's disappearing. We call it rising and setting, but for the sun there's no rising and setting. It's always in its orbit somewhere in the universe. So similarly, a living entity doesn't take birth and a living entity doesn't die. <laughs> there's no such thing as death. Death is, a, death is a word that's created for something that begins and ends. And therefore, life is eternal. So when he talks about life, there's no question of death because life is eternal. What is What apparently dies, and the body doesn't die either because the body is never alive. Something that's never alive can never die. So again, death doesn't apply. It's just a word we use. So what does it actually mean? It means the end of the duration of a one's temporary stay within a particular body. That's all. <laughs> but because it's temporary, that means somewhere else we will exist. So life is eternal. And for some people, they don't like that. <laughs> because they think, you know, it's just so miserable. I mean, I have to continue? <laughs> But for a devotee, they know that wherever I am, I can serve Krishna. So whether I'm here serving Krishna or somewhere else within the universe serving Krishna, or ideally, if I'm with Krishna back in the spiritual world, engaging in my eternal relationship with Krishna, you know, I'm always existing somewhere, and my activity is the same. Prabhupada would use the example of a, a decky machine. A decky is a wheat husking machine. He said, if you take the wheat husking machine and you have it in this earth planet, what does it do? do? It husks wheat. If you take the same machine and you bring it to the heavenly planets, what does it do? It husks wheat. The machine, wherever you take it, does the same thing. <laughs> so in the same way, a devotee, wherever they are, they're engaged in service of the Lord. So, therefore, a devotee doesn't fear death. A devotee fears what? Wasting time. <laughs> to waste the time that is valuable that we could use in this human life to become fully Krishna conscious, that is the waste of time. That is, that is the greatest, what we say, misfortune. Because life is, and we might say, Life in this body is short, and we're given so many, so much time to perfect our life. And when that perfection is there, then we have achieved the perfection of human life, and we go back home, back to Godhead. So every moment is meant to be used in bringing that awareness of our relationship with Krishna. Therefore, the greatest loss is to waste time. The great and Prabhupada mentions that there, and he's, he illustrates that all. Because time only goes in one direction. It goes, and then you, money, you know, money, they say money is precious. It, it's valuable. But time is more precious. Why? Because you can get money, you can lose money, you can again re regain it. You can't gain time back. Time is going in one direction. And for the materialist, taking away the durations of their life. But for a spiritualist, engaged in devotional service, what is it doing? It's bringing one closer to Krishna. So therefore, Prabhupada says, old age for a devotee is just, you know, a door, doorway to eternal life. You're getting closer to the best part of life. <laughs> So when we look at it from that perspective, we're looking at it from the reality. We're looking at it from the reality. So for one who is, in, who is, one who is fixed in Krishna consciousness, there's no fear. Because 
I'm here serving Krishna, and when I leave this body, I'll do the same thing somewhere else. <laughs> so life, in that for therefore, a devotee has no fear of death. They only have fear of not using the time that they have available within it, wherever they are, in the service of the Lord. That's all. That is the real waste of time, and that is the real anxiety for a devotee. So, and Krishna says, to perfect your life, he said, yam yam vapi smaram bhavam, taktva ante kalevalam, tam tam ivaiti kuntaya, sadata bhava bhavitaha. He mentions two verses. I quoted one of the two from the eighth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. That where you go depends on what you think of at the time of death. And what you think of at the time of death depends on what is your activities during your life. <laughs> so what becomes the most dear to one when the time of the leaving the body becomes the person's next destination? So devotional service makes means making Krishna the most dear of our everything in our life. And then, obviously, we're never separated from Krishna. And then when we end this body, we are, again, with Krishna in the spiritual world. And that's the mercy of the great souls. That's the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the form of this process of pure devotional service. That this world is simply a prison cell, that's all. The, the, the soul is locked up into this body and is restricted, wants to enjoy continuously or constantly, but cannot. And Prabhupada said, our nature is to be happy. Prabhupada would say to devotees sometimes, if you're not happy, you're in maya. <laughs> that means you're in a different kind of state of consciousness, which is not your natural consciousness. To be happy is normal. <laughs> but real happiness, Prabhupada qualifies it, is in relationship to our eternal nature, our, our relationship with Krishna. Happiness in this world is ephemeral and comes and goes just as quickly as the seasons come, or maybe even quicker. So, therefore, actually, you know, for a devotee, everything is auspicious. Everything is auspicious. Life is auspicious. Apparently, death is auspicious. Disease is another opportunity to, to actually become more serious in our Krishna consciousness. There's nothing inauspicious for a devotee. Nothing inauspicious for a devotee. And so this verse is really saying that Time has no effect on a devotee. Why? Because the devotee is engaged in something that is not within the realm of time. Devotional service does not fall into the category of time. It is beyond time. So even when you're engaged now in your devotional service in this time-controlled world, you're free from time. When your mind and senses are engaged in the devotional service of the Lord, there's no such thing as time. Time is conspicuous by its absence like that. And therefore, time becomes our, what we say, a, a catalyst for bringing us closer and closer to our eternal life with Krishna. And that is the only goal of devotional service. Devotional service is not about making a nice arrangement in this world because it's not possible. Whatever arrangement you make, and time will take that away. And whatever arrangements we make are always less than ideal anyway. So, what can we do in this world? All we can do is somehow use the mercy, take the mercy of the Lord and fix our mind in devotional service by chanting, by reading, by hearing, by serving, by worshiping, by praying, by performing many of the activities of devotional sir. And it says, Savai, what is, Savai Pumsam Paro Dharma Yato Bhakti Ahok Sajai Ohoi Tuki Apriyata Yayatma Supersidati. 
This verse indicates pure devotional service. When we only want Krishna. <laughs> when we only want Krishna. And that is the only desirable object because whatever else you want in this world, you can't keep. <laughs> you can't keep it. You can use it, and it may also fortify your existence to some degree, but you cannot keep anything in this world. People say, this is my country, my body, my money, my, my, my. Well, where does where this my come in? <laughs> you didn't have it when you came, and you're not going to keep it when you leave. <laughs> where is the my? <laughs> Maya. <laughs> That's who owns it. <laughs> now this, this is the nature of this, uh, what we say, ephemeral material existence. Uh, but we, we can use, Prabhupada says, to live in the material world means to be in a, uh, to, he says, to, you, to have a material body means to have a bad bargain. You went shopping, you went to the wrong store, it was closed. <laughs> you had your coupons to get a bargain, and you forgot them. You're away from your everything. You can't find your car keys. So you everything is a bad bargain. So then you try to you, to buy that product that you want, and you get something different, and it's not what you need, and it's not what you want. So then you go, and then you're stuck with it because it says no refund. <laughs> so we got a body and it says on it, no refund. <laughs> so what do you do with it? You can't throw it away and you have, you know, you're kind of stuck with it. So Prabhupada gave us, gives us the conclusion. Make the best use of a bad bargain. <laughs> use it in devotional service. And then it becomes a friend. And then it becomes an asset for achieving happiness and perfection in life. So we all have a material body, and the material body is going to be, it comes and it goes. And for some it comes and goes faster than others, but that doesn't, that is not a calculation, that is not a consideration. Consideration is when before I leave, I want to use every bit of my time to become uh, absorbed in my love for Krishna, my devotion to Krishna. That is perfection. And that is the only desirable goal in this life. And whatever we do in devotional service is meant to help us or, or help us bring us to that consciousness that it's about Krishna. <laughs> okay, so... It's only seven o'clock. Oh, okay. <laughs> see, see how time works. <laughs> Just by by giving a lecture, the time went backwards. <laughs> that means it's completely. See, this is the you know they say you know, everything inside the temple is transcendental. <laughs> Even time. So we're we're actually very. Uh, fortunate to be able to have a particular ceremony which is called the uh, samskara of diksha and that is the process of accepting the representative of the supreme personality of godhead in the form of the spiritual master and engaging in pure devotional service under the guidance Worshipping the Lord. This is, this initiation is a, it's not an option. Because in order to achieve perfection in life, one has to serve Krishna through the process of accepting Krishna as he wants to uh, us to accept him. He says, Tadviri Patipatena Paripasyena Sevaya he says, if you want to approach me, you have to approach me through my representative. And the process that 
binds that relationship is called initiation. And that relationship becomes an eternal relationship between the disciple and the spiritual master. It's never broken by time or, or what we say geographical distances. And that remains also eternal. And the duty of the spiritual master is to do whatever is required according to his teachings given to him by his spiritual master to bring that to person to pure devotional service. And the duty of the disciple is to follow those instructions as the most important thing within one's life. Nothing second. Yasya Devi Pura Bhaktir Yatata Devi Tata Guru Tasyaita Pratite Karta Prakasanata Mahatmanaha one who has that faith in Guru and Krishna, and the word is implicit, that means something that's not broken by circumstance or time or anything. Implicit faith. And Prabhupada used to say, my spiritual master is wrong, but he's right. <laughs> so that's the mood of a disciple. And what does that mean? That means that I have faith in Krishna, that Krishna will guide me through this person. And therefore, my duty is to make the instructions of the, the spiritual master my you know, foremost focus in life. And everything else will follow naturally. Because by pleasing the, the spiritual master, one pleases the Lord. And by pleasing the Lord, taktva deham purna janmani naiti mamaiti. So one goes back to God. And one has achieved perfection in all aspects of life, not only in the spiritual but everything becomes auspicious when Krishna is pleased. <laughs> okay, so um, I think we're about ready for the for the uh, yagya. Should, do we have time for questions, or should we just go on to the yagya? Please give me some instructions in this regard. Yagya, okay. So thank you all for coming, and please give your blessings to the candidates. We have one first initiation, which is very special. Uh, I'll speak about that during the... Well, actually, you're going right into the young you know. I just want to speak a little bit about... Yeah, yeah, I'll speak about... Mother Shalni. Mother Shalni has been dedicating her life to practicing devotional service with all her heart and soul. And by Krishna's inconceivable arrangement, um, she, her duration of life has been threatened by another living entity. It's called cancer. <laughs> so she's under a what we say, the effects of a disease, but ultimately, no, it disappears like that. And she's always under the control of Krishna. Krishna is inconceivable, and sometimes when he wants to take his devotee back to Godhead quicker, he creates a situation where we can't stay in this world. <laughs> that is called special mercy. <laughs> special mercy. So she's fixed in her Krishna consciousness. She has no fear of death. I've spent so much time with her. I talk to her and she's expressed it. She's not the slightest indication that she's actually fearing death, although it could happen very soon. She's just thinking, you know, how can I spend more of my time developing my love for Krishna? And that's her focus in life. So she's, she's achieved the perfection of perfect consciousness. She dedicated herself completely to serving the Lord and developing her love for the Lord. So when I heard that uh, she wanted to, uh, you know, ensure her Krishna consciousness through the process of initiation, I became very, very inspired. 
So I'm really happy to have an opportunity to be in a position to uh, serve her in the way by giving her an opportunity to connect with the disciplic succession and become a, a Vaishnav in the Srila Prabhupada's family of Vaishnavas. So, thank you. Mother Leela Shakti, you want to add something? Hare Krishna, everybody. Um, my obeisance is to you, Guru Maharaj, and Srila Prabhupada. And I seek blessings from all the Vaishnavas who are able to serve this wonderful devotee. Um, Shalini was introduced to me about three years ago, um, going through similar situation like hers. So, um, but in due course of time, um, she became my inspiration. Uh, last few few weeks, actually, last few months, I have been thinking. Uh, Actually, I was quite um, proud, would I say, or I had this feeling in my heart that I have been able to support, help devotees to come closer to Krishna, to Guru Maharaj, and take initiation. But when the question came about Shalini, all that pride or all that feeling that I was the one, an instrument, is gone. Um, and Sharini has become such an inspiration to me in my life. And I feel honored that I was able to serve her in any little way that I could. Whenever I went to her house or talked to her over the phone, not once she has complained about her pain, but seeing her going through what she is going through, seeing her wounds, the way they are oozing, I was in pain, but Shalini has never been in pain. That's what she says. Even in this condition, her focus is so so staunch. Her serving attitude is so amazing that whenever we would go, whoever would go, she would have prasadam ready. She couldn't lift her hand, but she would still serve. And if I were to shed some tears today, I would because I feel so emotional. And I feel so honored that I was able to serve such a wonderful devotee. And if I have to learn anything from this today, um, it's uh, her dedication has taken over all my intelligence. Her parents are here. Her mother is here. Her sister is here. Her good husband and her little boy and her father is sitting right there. Uh, we would like to thank you for having such a wonderful, wonderful devotee in your house. It's very rare that a child like this takes place in somebody's house or is born in somebody's house. I don't want to make it any more morbid, but this is my thoughts. And I can't help today. I'm very, very excited for Shalini for taking this step. When she first told me, I just couldn't believe it. And I'm very excited that she's taken this step. But equally, I, I feel honored, very, very honored. And I feel really humbled by her attitude, her gratitude and her Krishna consciousness, and her detachment. If I'm going to take anything home today after her initiation, is her level of detachment, 
we talk about detachment, we give classes about detachment, but I have seen a real detachment, and I would like to say three Hari Bol to Shalini. Hari Bol! Hari Bol! Hari Bol! And I would equally like to say three Hari Bols to her parents for giving such a wonderful daughter to Srila Prabhupada. Hari 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 And her husband, Sunil, he's been a rock to her. Um, and that little Byron, he's, he's been doing everything possible to make mommy and daddy happy. She draws beautiful pictures for us when we go. And um, she's a real little gem. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for accepting her. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. In addition, we have uh, Mother Vinodini who will be a, taking second initiation. And I believe I was informed that there are other candidates who will be sitting in the fire sacrifices. And, uh, I think uh, we have uh, Julan Leela Devidasi, who is a disciple of Radhanath Maharaj. Is she here? Yeah, okay. And... And then um, there's Kanchan Bedi, Devi Dasi, in the Jumna Maharaj disciple. Is she here? Okay. Hare Krishna. And then Vamsi Vat Das, Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj disciple. Okay. So then if you can all come forward, then um, uh, we can begin the ceremony. Okay. So everybody give your blessings and prayers. And take part in the yagya. Hare Krishna. <laughs>